Th thank you, Mr. Yan. Y yes. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining the presentation. After lunch, I, I, I know that it can be a little bit tough to keep awake. I hope, I hope that the presentation will be stimulating enough so that uh, we can all enjoy it. Um, my name is Fraud Sever, and I'm the Pipeline Division Manager at QuakeRap. Uh, and uh, QuakeRap is a special specialist in FRP. I'm going to use the term FRP in the, throughout the presentation, fiber reinforced polymers. In the previous presentation, uh, Dr. Murad uh, talked about carbon fiber reinforced polymers. My presentation will include carbon fiber reinforced polymers as well as glass fiber re uh, reinforced polymers and some of our uh, unique and patented composite systems. As such, I will be just using the term FRP, to, uh, to, and when I use that term, I will be referring to them all. Uh, we have a sister company that is called uh, FRP Construction. Uh, we, are, we are under the same roof, but uh, that's just to keep the book separate. Other than we are pretty much the same company, they are our construction arm. QuakeRap does material design, uh, project rehabilitation design, and also material sales as well as research and development. Uh, part of the project, uh, this presentation, was put together by the company, current president and CEO, Dr. Mohamed Esani. He's actually the founder of the company as well, and a professor emeritus of the University of Arizona. So here is what I'm planning to talk about. Uh, first, I will start with infrastructure rehabilitation with FRP, and uh, then we will move on to mechanical properties of FRPs, and then the specifics of pipeline applications, uh, some design principles, uh, a patented product of ours, uh, stick pipe, uh, some case studies uh, with stick pipe, and some others. And uh, actually, I didn't include it here somehow, but I will be talking about another point repair product that's called Super Laminate. <laughs> and finally, I will talk about a different system that we recently came up with, which is, in fact, a different. It's not about rehabilitation, but making a new pipe using our rehabilitation materials, and that pipe is called Infinite Pipe. So a little bit history about FRPs. They are relatively new to the construction industry. Their, their use did not start until the 1990s. In fact, uh, the company founder and CEO, Mo Isani, published the first, uh, co-authored the first technical paper in 1988 uh, that talked about using uh, carbon fiber and glass fiber reinforced polymers for infrastructure rehabilitation. And that's, uh, he, was, he was focusing on as a structural engineer and professor he was focusing on repairing the, uh, the buildings that were heavily damaged by an earthquake uh, pr uh, prior to 1988 uh, in California, hence the name QuakeRap. <coughs> in other industries, FRPs were used uh, as early as in the 50s. Uh, Corvette 1953 has a good deal of fiberglass. You know, fiberglass boats are everywhere. Even Boeing 787 is 50% carbon fiber in its composites. So we usually say if you can trust to use these materials, on your aircraft, you can sure trust to use them on your, in your pipelines. So this slide shows uh, basic components of an FRP system. So you can see the fabric in the background. That's a glass fabric. You can tell that easily from the color. It's white. Carbon would be black. And the saturating resin, we use epoxy. We use epoxies, actually, for different applications. They are all engineered. For instance, if we want it to be more chemical resistant, then we would use a different type of uh, uh, epoxy for uh, sewers where hydrogen sulfide induced corrosion is more prominent. And uh, in the bottom, around the materials, there's a circle of strips. Those are cured uh, strips. Uh, normally, we have these fabrics, and we saturate them in the field and apply them on the substrate. <laughs> strips are already with the resin and cured, so they feel a little bit harder. I have some examples of that. I'm going to hand this over, and perhaps you can circulate during the uh, presentation. <laughs> Some structural properties of FRPs. Um, uh, they are, uh, carbon fiber is very strong. Um, it is, uh, that's the primary reason why it's the preferred material for uh, PCCP, pre-stressed concrete cylinder pipe, and other steel pipe, high pressure application rehabilitation, as Murat outlined. Uh, actually, its ultimate strength is two, three times more than, more than that of steel. When, but when we look at the modules of elasticity, it will not yield as steel does. So steel in the, in the lower strains will have a little bit higher modules of elasticity, but carbon we, will go on and it will not break when the steel well reaches the within, uh, within the limits of ductility. 
Even glass fibers, as you can see, that its uh, ultimate strength is slightly greater than steel. Here's a video that I liked. It doesn't have much to do with water infrastructure, but it's, uh, it gives a good idea uh, about uh, how strong a single layer of carbon fabric can be. So here, uh, the technician is applying a tack coat, is what we call it. This is a, a stickier type of epoxy. <laughs> and then they're rolling out the carbon fibers. They are going to saturate it with um, mechanically stronger epoxy. Now they are setting it to cure. So in, one, in the other direction there is no strength, but in the direction of fabric, these guys can stand on it without any issues. Even further, they can roll truck, pickup truck, and the brick, brick gets crushed. No damage to the carbon fabric. So there are some design standards. Uh, again, Murat uh, outlined the AWA C305, and that's uh, setting the norm for uh, uh, pre-stressed concrete or reinforced concrete pipeline rehabilitation. And there's a ASME, uh, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, PCC2. That is for external wrapping of pipes, uh, more used in uh, power plants or oil refineries, as examples. Mm -hmm. And uh, within NASCO, I'm, uh, which is Na National Association of Sewer Service Companies in the United States, that publishes guidelines and, um, and provides other services to sewer contractors and engineers. And uh, I'm leading a subcommittee within NASCO that we are soon going to publish a spec guideline specification for the use of FRP in, for sewer rehab. So FRP systems are very strong in tension and flexure, but they are not as strong as in, co uh, in compression. So that uh, compressive strength is usually hovers around 40 to 50 percent. That means that when we design for gravity sewers or external loads, sometimes we do not we do not get the best benefit out of carbon fiber. So we <coughs> end up applying too many layers. So that brought brought, out, brought the idea of using uh, uh, three what we call 3D core fabric and. Uh, the development of stiff pipe for gravity sewer and external uh, applications where external loads are the, uh, the driving uh, parameter for the design. So here are some uh, advantages of FRP uh, in a nutshell. The carbon fiber again is two to four times stronger than steel. And isotropy, that's an important component as well. So we have biaxial and uniaxial fabrics. When it's uniaxial, you're using less materials and saving on the cost, but you're using it only in the direction where you want uh, the most resistance against the forces. For instance, if it's about all about bending, then you would use a unidirectional uh, carbon fiber as opposed to biaxial fabrics and save on the fibers, which heavier or the more the fibers, more is the material. And these, are, these can be expensive materials because they are, again, advanced and highly engineered. They do not corrode. Uh, again, there's very few exceptions to that. If, it's, if the environment is extremely acidic, and then we would use a specially uh, developed epoxies for those. Design factors, these are general design factors for pipeline rehabilitation. Uh, do not necessarily apply to just uh, FRP. Uh, so there's flexible uh, materials or rigid materials, and flexible host pipes and rigid host pipes. And rigid examples are concrete. Flexible examples include steel and uh, polymeric materials. So when we design for these host pipes, we need to keep that in mind because we are actually <coughs> introducing a complex system of sometimes rigid to rigid or rigid to flexible uh, material uh, combination with the host pipe and the liner. There's a concept of fully structural and semi-structural. AWWA outlines this well, and uh, it uh, classifies water main rehabilitation materials from class one through four, one being uh, <coughs> non-structural, that is just a corrosion barrier, two, three, semi-structural, and four being fully structural. Fully structural means it's standalone and it can withstand all the loads internally and externally without depending on the host pipe. There is a common notion in the industry that fully structural is the only way to go when you rehabilitate a pipeline. Uh, I have a different opinion, or as a company we have a different approach, that it actually depends on the host pipe's condition. So if the host pipe is uh, 
extremely deteriorated and its strength is to be compromised, then yes, fully structural. But oftentimes, uh, semi-structural rehabilitation might make more sense. And with FRP systems, we had the flexibility of design to any load uh, requirements uh, uh, depending on the uh, site conditions and how, as well as the host site condition. Examples of some co common design equations. This is the mod modified Timoshenko buckling equation, and it's modified uh, for liners. So it takes into account uh, the host pipe support as well as host pipe ovality. Host pipe support is a positive factor. It's going to reduce the uh, strength requirement on the liner versus ovality. It's going to increase uh, the risk of stress concentrations on the liner. Another important equation that's a modified Iowa formula. It dates back to early 1900s uh, <laughs> after years and years of research at the Iowa State University. But there's a fundamental uh, flaw in the industry to use this equation in the wrong places. Uh, when we use it for flexible liners, you will quickly find out that uh, it will result in uh, the main factor for uh, the material properties, the stiffness you see in the de uh, denominator that the EI will have little or to no effect in this equation. So if you're designing for deflection, you have to be real careful when you use this equation. So flexible versus rigid. <coughs> that I mentioned in the previous slides. So this uh, is another study uh, from 2010. And uh, I cited from Trenches Technology Magazine. I like this graph. It's a clear depiction of how loads and stresses can be different on a rigid or flexible pipe. The idea is based on that Iowa uh, uh, experiments that when you have a rigid pipe, you, it, it withstands the entire pretty much trench load, including the ladder loads. Versus flexible pipes, they start yielding, and the soil, they do not necessarily take the loads that is, that is coming from the lateral direction of the soil. So that results in, when we design a flexible pipe or a rigid pipe, the reason why I mention this, when we say, sometimes we get inquiries like, design me a liner that will be equivalent to this type of concrete pipe. Well, I don't really need to because the liners are flexible and they will not see as high stresses as the con as, uh, concrete pipes will, will do. So wet layout method is the most common method of applying FRPs. It's the conventional method. And Murat showed some pictures and examples of that. <coughs> and this slide shows some uh, details about wet layout fabric width. Uh, thickness, they are very thin, you can see that from 1.3 to 1 1.7. Uh, it's in that, you know, you can see the samples in the binder as well. And um, so what that means is, especially when we saturate, when we always saturate with epoxy, but especially when we apply a top coat, a good thickness of top coat of epoxy, we get a really smooth surface. So that is in addition to really strong lining material, which means that hydraulic capacity for most cases is improved in pressure pipe systems. Some case studies, this is from DC water, it's a 96 inch sewer pipe. Ironically, the hose pipe is, is a glass fiber reinforced pipe, but it's centrifugally cast, uh, not to be confused with our systems, but it's a, in general, it's a good pipe, but here they had a localized failure. Um, so we went in and, and lined it with our FRP system, and on the upper left, you see a saturating machine, that's how we saturate the fabrics in the field. And that can be taken inside the pipe as well, as needed. One of our most significant projects uh, took place in Costa Rica. It was an emergency repair. Uh, it was a uh, hydroelectric, uh, hydroelectric uh, power dam, uh, Penstock. It, they built this concrete pipe uh, on site, casted concrete, <laughs> but it started leaking as soon as uh, they put it to service. Uh, so QuakeRap provided an FRP solution for this, and the project was completed. Within, uh, within seven days or ten days, but it was really fast, working multiple back-to-back -back sh shifts. And uh, the, uh, the total length of this pipe is uh, 1.8 kilometers, basically. This shows the uh, service preparation process. So we like on concrete, uh, per uh, ACI classification, American Concrete Institute, uh, concrete surface pro profile two or three. That basically means it's not too smooth, but it's not really rough either. So when you touch it, you will feel a little bit of roughness. That's the kind of surface that ideal for FRP applications. Now they are 
uh, applying the uh, fabric that is saturated with resin and with the roller they are applying a tack coat between the layers or a top coat on the top layer. This is a simple design drawing uh, from a siphon rehabilitation project in Palisade, Colorado. Uh, the, it's just the, to give you an idea about what a cross section looks like. And uh, it, we specify the layers, what we are using, uh, and termination points, uh, bends, uh, if there are, there are areas that require a specific geometry or, uh, or again, uh, different uh, application points, uh, they are all identified with the details. <coughs> And end seals are done in two ways. And if, if it's a pressure pipe, and if it's not extremely large, say it's not if it's not greater than uh, two meters, two meters or two two and a half meters, then we use uh, uh, steel bands, uh, uh, rubber bands with uh, constrained with steel ring. Uh, the brand name for that is most well known. Brand name is Wico Seals. There's the also uh, European Trailborg. Uh, so I suggest you check their websites, there, there are some neat products for joint seals and we use them as end seals. Uh, another case study from Carlsbad, California. Uh, this is a, a hot uh, steam line, so we, have, we can go up in temperatures, we do, our, we do have our limitations. We wouldn't want to go um, anywhere near 70 degrees Celsius because that's where the resin starts reaching the transition, uh, glass transition point. But 55, 60 degrees, I would comfortably use it up to 65 degrees Celsius. So you can see the bend here clearly that we uh, detailed this out in the drawings that that's a wedged formation uh, well, when we negotiate bends. Culvert rehabilitation is uh, gaining momentum lately in the United States, uh, especially this corrugated metal culverts uh, that is owned by the Department of Transportation all around the country. Uh, this is from North Dakota uh, DOT. You can see the geometry of the culvert, it's not circular, but that doesn't really matter to uh, FRP applications. It can be applied to any geometry. We can line pipes externally as well. This is more common for uh, power plants and as well as treatment plants. This is a wastewater treatment facility uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the problem with that pipe was the pipe above this pipe was leaking uh, raw sewage, I believe, so it was corroding, it was corroded. So we wrapped it externally and, and provided the point pair for the uh, entire uh, internal pressure. Uh, 